Hi, I'm Dr. Swati. I practice orbit and oculoplasty at Chikaran Hospital. Tearing is one of the most frequently experienced symptom which often makes us visit an eye doctor. While there is a myriad of conditions causing curing, let us look at the important ones. To begin with, let us understand the anatomy. Our tears are produced by the tear glands which are located at the outer corner of our eye under, underneath the bone. The tear produced by the glands along with the secretions from the conjunctiva which is a transparent membrane over the white in the eye and the oil produced by the oil glands in the lids form a tearful complex. The job of the tearful is to lubricate the eye, to clean the eye and provide us crystal clear vision. Once the job is done, it drains into narrow openings called the puncta into the tear tubes which join together to form the tear duct which is located in the nasal bones called the nasolacrimal duct and drain into the nose and then into the throat. That is why often we experience the bitterness of the eye drops when it is still. Whenever there is an imbalance between the production and drainage of the tears, one experiences watering in the eye. Dryness in the eye can be because of decreased production of tears. This results in a reflex increase in tear production resulting in tear. Now, further details of this, my colleague has already elaborated in the previous videos. You can access it on our YouTube channel. Today, let us look at the drainage aspect of it. Our eyelids are tightly uh, attached to our eyeballs. This smoothens the drainage of our eye tears. Whenever the eyelids are loose, or abnormal in position. Whenever the conjunctiva is loose, all this results in a bumpy road for the tears to drain into the tear tubes. These conditions could be because of aging, could be because of trauma or certain infections in the eyelids. This can result in the eyelids turning inwards called the entropion wherein the eyelashes start rubbing the eye, resulting in irritation and watering. Sometimes the eyelids can turn outwards, called the ectropion, exposing the inner structures, resulting in tearing and dryness of the eye. These can be corrected through tightening the loose uh, tissues both of the conjunctiva and the eyelids and putting stitches. These are all done under simple local anesthesia as a daycare procedure. Sometimes our tear tube openings called the puncta can be narrow or small. This results in a delay in the drainage of the tears through the tubes. In these conditions, we can open them up and widen them through stents. When the tear duct is blocked, it has to be corrected only through a surgery and there are no medicine treatments for this condition. Now, because of blocked duct, tears start accumulating in the tear sac or the tear tube which may in future result in infections and sometimes very rarely loss of vision due to severe infection. So the surgery for this involves opening the nasal bone, making a small open into the nose and directly connecting the tear tubes into the nose, which simulates a bypass surgery. Now, what we are bypassing is the blocked nasal duct. This is done as again a daycare procedure and has a very short downtime of about a week to 10 days. It can be done under local anesthesia 
or with mild sedation or general anesthesia based on one's pain tolerance and comfort. Once the surgery is done, sometimes we may place a strength in the tubes which will make the opening remain patent while the internal wound heals. The external wound is closed through a few stitches which are removed after a week's time. The stent if placed is removed after anywhere from 6 weeks to 3 months duration. Watering can also be seen in newborn babies. Up to 20% of them are born with a incomplete nasolacrimal tub. Many a times this opens up on its own by the age of one year or so. These kids are usually advised a nasolacrimal duct massage which is done by the parent, mother to be precise, uh, using her finger and placing it between the eye and the nose at the junction and firmly pressing the finger in a downward direction. This is called Krigler's massage. The advantage of this is it prevents pooling of the tears in the tear sac and pushes the fluid through the tear duct which may be blocked at its nasal end. So this water pushes the whatever clogging material is there at its opening and helps the nasal lacrimal duct to open up. This is done and observed until 9 months of age. If the watering persists along with discharge, that is when your doctor might advise you a procedure called probing, wherein a small probe is passed through our tear tubes into the nasolacrimal duct and try to open the opening of the nasolacrimal duct. Now, since the babies uh, will be unable to tolerate the procedure, it is generally done under a short general anesthesia. Again, a daycare procedure will be, will be sent on the same day and subsequently to be monitored. For any further queries, you can contact us at Shaker and Hospital. Thanks for watching. Thank you.